Let's say you're getting ready to shoot the ILS into runway 2 at Santa Fe. Or better yet, you're being asked about it on your IFR checkride. The examiner asks, what's the final approach VIC for the ILS? We got a couple candidates. There's the Maltese cross symbol at the Duoma intersection. But we know that would be the final approach VIC for the non-precision localizer only form of the approach. The ILS has a precision final approach VIX, and that's the glide slope intercept altitude, shown by the lightning bolt symbol. But then your examiner asks what the other figure in slightly smaller text is. Is that the precision final approach VIX? Sure, we could look up what each figure represents in the aeronautical chart user's guide, but let's work it out from looking at a few approaches. On this one, it seems like a pointless question because the two figures show the same altitude. What if we found an approach plate where the altitudes are different? Here's one, the ILS at Leia County. The glide slope intercept is 4,800, but the altitude listed at the cross is 4,756. Here's another, the ILS Zulu at Roswell. Glide slope intercept at 5,100, but 5,018 crossing the Maltese Cross. Finally, the ILS at SAC Exec. 1,500 glide slope intercept with the Maltese Cross at 1,493. What do these three approaches have in common that makes these two altitudes differ? And what do other approaches where they don't differ, like the very first one we looked at at Santa Fe, change? The first two approaches have what's called an outer marker, shown by the abbreviation OM or LOM. These are getting a bit rare nowadays, but they're the original method aircraft would have to identify a final approach fix. Even though most aircraft don't have the equipment on board to identify the marker beacon signal anymore, Many modern GPS units will simulate the signal when overflying it. The third approach doesn't have a marker beacon, but it's identified as the VOR station. The common element of all three is that we have a fixed station at the final approach fix, which allows us to identify the position without the aid of GPS, DME, or a cross radial. Let's compare that to the approach on the right. The Duma intersection is the final approach fix. It's identified either using DME 6.2 miles from the localizer, or with GPS, which isn't required for most ILS approaches. So here, there's no fixed position we're able to identify as we're flying this approach outside of DME or cross radials. So what that figure in smaller text is telling us is the altitude of the glide slope when we cross the outer marker or a suitable substitute. When there is an actual concrete station at that point, like in the three approaches on the left, there will be an exact altitude where this occurs. When we're using an intersection or a DME fix, as is the case with the approach on the right, this is less certain, and so we revert to the glide slope intercept altitude. The glide slope intercept altitude is rounded to a higher figure than the height of the glide slope at the marker. What this means is that in relatively standard temperature conditions, we should intercept the glide slope, start our descent down on it, and then cross the marker. Seeing the outer marker indication going off at the lower altitude of around 5,018 feet. An important takeaway is that we should have already intercepted the glide slope, configured for final approach, and be in our descent before seeing the outer marker enunciation. If we wait until we see it to begin configuring, we'll have shot through the glide slope. There may be an exception to this in particularly cold weather. Recall that the altimeter is susceptible to temperature errors, especially high above sea level like we are here in New Mexico. Standard temperature at our glide slope intercept altitude is about 5 Celsius. At this temperature, our indicated altitude of 5,100 feet will be very close to our true altitude. But to use an extreme example, if the outside air temperature were 20 below Celsius, our altimeter would actually read around 5,600 feet. We'd descend to our glide slope intercept altitude of 5,100. This is what our altimeter says, but our actual true altitude is about four or 500 feet below this. This means that our glide slope intercept is actually going to happen a bit further down, past the outer marker. Our altimeter shows 5100, but at a true altitude of like 4700, we're going to pass by the marker with the glide slope needle still above us, and only intercept it a bit later on. This is all fine and legal to intercept at a lower true altitude since the restrictions on the plate are noted in indicated altitudes, and there's no cold temperature adjustments for this approach. Also, once we're on the glide slope, altimeter errors due to temperature don't matter. The glide slope altitudes will always be the same, in true altitude. So don't let that little altitude figure throw you, even if it's different on some approach plates. 
Just know that it's there for situational awareness, but don't rely on the outer marker to tell you when to configure for an approach. Still base everything off of when you're actually intercepting that glide slope. Remember that there's no safer place in the sky to be than on a precision approach with the needle centered.